Good morning, church. Thanks for that. I did that at the last service, and they all just looked at me. I started feeling real self-conscious. Hey, it is great to be with you this morning. My name is Derek Ray, and I'm one of the group's pastors, and really love being with y'all. Hey, for those who are joining us online, thank you so much for watching today. We are glad that you are here as well. Hey, we are in week two of our sermon series called The Way of Wisdom, and we are just kind of walking through Proverbs chapter three during this series, and so uh, that's where we are today. Uh, I will tell you, if you have not heard Pastor Van's sermon from last week would highly encourage you to go back and watch it. It'll absolutely be worth your time. Um, But this morning, we're going to be talking about relationships. And if there's one thing that I've learned in my long, long life is that relationships are like cars, right? You've picked up on this. You get this. Uh, Relationships are like cars. And let me tell you how I mean that. Um, First, a car is built, And from that day until the day that the car dies, it has to be maintained. And it has to be maintained properly. And so a car's built, and then maintenance, 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 and then it, it dies eventually one day. But it's, it's all the things, right? It's, you know, you have to put gas every week. Come on. And you have to oil change and air filters. And I'm not a car guy, so I don't know all the things you have to do. But there's lots of stuff, Right. Um, I, you know, I had a mechanic one time tell me, uh, Derek, your flex capacitor is broken and you probably should get that fixed. It's about $1,000. Um, for those of y'all not laughing, flex capacitors from Back to the Future and it's not a real thing. And I would believe that kind of stuff. That's how gullible I am. Like, yeah, yeah, 1000 bucks, sure. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Um, so anyway, cars have to be maintained, but they have to be maintained properly. Okay, and relationships have to be maintained and maintained properly. Uh, I remember when I first changed oil for the first time in my life. Y'all, I had a brother that um, that just was born, kind of knowing most everything. Uh, it, that's just who he is, and, and it drove me nuts because he just he just knew stuff that I didn't know, and it, it really drove me crazy. So my brother decided to give me a t- tutorial on how to change oil, and literally two minutes, he's like, undo the plug, let the oil drain out, put the plug back in, unscrew the filter, put the new filter on, bada bing, bada boom, put the new oil in, you're done, right? That's it. I'm like, simple, I can do this. And then he took off, got in his car and drove away. And so I'm left with the tools. And so I get under the car and I unscrew the the plug and the oil drains out and I put the plug back in, get on tight. And um, then I go and um, change the air, not the air filter, the oil filter. And... um, and I put the new oil in. But when I was changing the, the, the oil filter, as I, was, I took the old one off and I started screwing the new one on, and, and the whole time I'm thinking, you know, oil is vital to a car. It really matters that the car has this stuff in there. And so as I'm putting the filter on, I'm like, I need to make sure I get this sucker on tight because I do not want oil spraying everywhere. And so I start cranking that filter down. And, and some of y'all are, are kind of snickering a little bit because you've changed oil before and you know you don't do that. I didn't know that because my brother gave me a two minute tutorial, which wasn't enough. And I was very frustrated. So I start cranking that thing. I'm like, all right, this is not going to leak. And, and the reason you don't crank it really, really tight is there's, there's a very very delicate little rubber gasket that's inside this filter. And if you crank it down tight, you're going to break that gasket. And if you break the gasket, oil is going to spray everywhere. So I crank it on really, really tight. And then I hop in the car and I take off to my next thing. Somewhere about eight to 12 minutes down the road, um, every light in my car started flashing and beeping and screaming at me. And I'm like, what in the world? I just changed the oil. This, it's, you should be happy right now. You're not happy. What are you doing? And so I pull over on the side of the road. Now, y'all, this was, uh, this was back in the 80s. So we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have the Google. You, you couldn't just call someone and say, hey, come pick me up. When, when your car breaks down in the 80s, 
you just wait. <laughs> hopefully someone will come along. And then hopefully the person that does come along is actually gonna be nice enough to stop and help you. So I'm, I've got the, you know, the hood up and I'm sitting in my car and no one's coming along, no one's coming along. Then all of a sudden my brother pulls up and I'm like, what, Britain? How, how did you, I called him Britain because uh, that was his name, but I was like, <laughs> I said, Britain, how did you find me? And he said, Derek, there's a line of oil from our driveway <laughs> to this spot right here. I just followed the oil to where you were. When I got home, I saw that there was a trail of oil and I went, something's wrong. I'm going to go see what it is. And so he found me, he saved me, but y'all, I killed that engine. I absolutely killed it. It was toast. We put a bullet in it and it was done. Um, so what I learned from that experience is that proper maintenance is so much cheaper than having to repair something all together, right? It is a whole different ball game. Oil and filter back then, 12, 15 bucks. Repairing an engine back then, a couple thousand dollars. I found that out the hard way. Very expensive. Relationships are no different. Relationships are no different. And what King Solomon is going to show us today is that if we are intentional about investing and making these little investments in, in all of our relationships in life, whether it's our relationship with God, our relationship with our spouse, our relationship with each other, it doesn't matter. All relationships will succeed when they heed the advice that we're going to read today, okay? So let's look at it together. Uh, this is in Proverbs chapter 3 verse three and four, and it says this. He says, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. So here's why you wanna listen to me this morning. Here's why it's important. If we will do what King Solomon says to us today, we will actually win favor with God and other people. Let me ask you, is it, would it be good for you if your boss like found favor with you? Would that be good? How about your teachers at school or parents? What if your kids found favor with you? Did anyone have teenagers here? You were like begging, please love me. <laughs> would you love me, please? I mean, what would that look like if your kid had found favor with you? Well, what Solomon is saying to us today is, if we will do these things, God and those around us will find favor with you and a good name. All right, so it's real important that we all kind of lean in and listen this morning. So I wanna, he uses two words. He uses love and he uses faithfulness. I wanna be clear on the love thing because when, when I say love, I realize there's probably a hundred different thoughts on what love is, right? So let me tell you what he was talking about, because it's not the fall in love kind of love. It's not that ooey gooey, you know, heart pitter patter. That, um, it's not that kind of love, okay? The kind of love he's talking about is it was a steadfast love. It was a secure, concrete kind of love. Like I am committed to this and I'm gonna be intentional about this. That's the kind of love. And matter of fact, all the different translations of the Bible, they all say something, they use different words for this passage because it's one of those words that um, it just means more than what we think it means. So it means to be steadfast and secure. It, love also means to, to be kind. It's a kindness and it's being intentional about kindness, whether the person deserves it or not. I'm gonna choose to be kind to people. So that's the kind of love that he's talking about. A, a steadfast, a kindness, and a commitment. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Then he uses the word faithfulness. Um, and, and faithfulness means exactly what you think it would mean. It means steadfast and firm and solid, um, but it also means the word truth. So it's like telling the truth. In other words, um, when you say something, following through with the thing that you said you were going to do, that's what faithfulness is talking about. Okay, so that's the image he, he gives us is that we are, to, um, we are to do those things. We are to let them never leave us. Love and faithfulness. 
And then in, um, and actually when, when Cynthia and I got married, um, just to give you a little picture here, when Cynthia and I got married, and this was a long time ago, but um, she wouldn't appreciate me telling you that, but um, it was. So when we got married, I had all of my stuff and she had all of her stuff. And then we both brought our stuff to the one house and then we lived there together, right? Um, that's what you do when you get married. And so we did that and, and we had all these boxes. And, and y'all back then, uh, again, this was a long time ago, back then we didn't have cell phones. And so um, we had these things called pictures and they were actually pieces of paper. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> uh, there wasn't this phone that you just pull out and, and you've got every picture that's ever been taken ever on your phone right there. We would carry around shoe boxes filled with pictures. Now, some people who were organized, they would put them into booklets and all that. I was not. I had a shoe box and it had hundreds and hundreds of pictures. Basically, my whole life was in this one little shoe box of everything that I'd ever done. And so Cynthia uh, pulls it out one day and she's, you know, again, we're just kind of putting stuff up and in its place. And she pulls out the shoe box and she's flipping through it and flipping through it. And she pulls up a picture and she goes, who's this? And it was me and a, a girl, and I was like, oh. <laughs> that was Sally, that was a long time ago. We used to date. She goes, huh, we'll put that one here. <laughs> flipping through, flipping, oh, cute, cute, cute. Oh, wow, that's a big fish, Derek, way to go. Um, <laughs> who's this? <laughs> oh, that was, <laughs> that was Sarah. You don't know her. Uh, we used to date. Huh. That'll go over here. <laughs> so after a little bit, she found a few pictures of some old girlfriends. And she was very nice to pull them aside for me so I could look through them one last time. <laughs> but I was very, y'all, here's exactly what happened. I took those pictures and I tore them up. And I threw them in the garbage took the garbage out to the street and watched the garbage man haul them away. You know why I was happy to do that? Because a couple weeks before that time, a pastor had stood in front of me and Cynthia and he looked at me and he said, Derek, will you commit to forsake all other women and keep yourself for her alone? And with my mouth, I said, I will. So I was happy to chuck those pictures because I wanted to be faithful to my wife. That is what God's word is saying to us today. That is the kind of faithfulness he's talking about, that we will essentially forsake all others and commit that the things that come out of my mouth really matter. They're really important. So I'm gonna be intentional about what I say so that when I do say something, people can know that is gonna happen. That thing that Derek said, I know it's gonna happen. I don't even have to wonder because that's who Derek is, he's, he's faithful. And that's what Solomon is saying here, that we need to let love and faithfulness never leave us. Let's look back at uh, Proverbs 3, verse three, and he says, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Now what are the things that we bind around our neck? Jewelry, right? Necklaces. Some of y'all probably have some on right now. I used to have a necklace back in high school. I had a really thick gold necklace, and when I wore it, I looked good. <laughs> I looked really good. Uh, men wanted to be me <laughs> at that time. Um, we wear the things that are important to us, but, but what Solomon's saying here is you, you want to show these things on the outside. You want other people to see, you want to display these things in front of other people. When I wore my thick gold chain that looked so good, other people noticed it. I was displaying, check this out, right? And so other people would notice it and, and that's what Solomon is saying here. What you want other people to notice in your life is love and faithfulness, being steadfast and being true to what you say. That's what you want to display to other people. And so he says, bind them around your neck, um, that it needs to be something that is shown to others. 
when we practice these things, they will actually become who we are. When we practice love, when we practice speaking our word and, and following through with what we say, when we practice those things, it actually becomes a part of our character. It becomes who we are, which is really cool, which is why people tell you, um, clean your room. Practice cleaning your room. Let's get that discipline mastered because exterior disciplines will lead to interior disciplines. If I will make my room every day and just get in the habit, it becomes a discipline. I just do it. But that discipline is going to work its way into other areas of my life, and I will just become more disciplined in life. So exterior leads to interior. Uh, just this week, I was, <laughs> one of my disciplines is I, I do not ever want to be in a building alone with another woman that is not my wife. Okay, so um, I try to be very intentional. And, and here at Cedarcrest, our staff is very intentional about, hey, we're not gonna have a male and female here in the building alone, just the two of them. So just this week, I pulled up to the church and I'm getting ready to go into the office. And when I, when I pull in here, I see Sammy's car and Sammy's a female, um, although her name sounds like it could be a boy, but she is a girl. And so, sorry, um, so Sammy was, was parked, uh, had parked her car, and I pulled right in front of her car, and I immediately grabbed my phone and text her, Sammy, are you in the building alone? Because I wanted to know. I didn't want to be in the building. And she texts me, Derek, turn around. I'm right behind you sitting in my car. Like, you are so unobservant. Um, <laughs> and I thought I was being good by... by wearing love and faithfulness around my neck by binding those around my neck, by not going into the church. But what was happening really was Sammy was binding love and faithfulness around her neck because Richard was in the building by himself and she wasn't going in until someone else showed up. So that's what binding love and faithfulness. And y'all, again, this is not just marriage relationships. It's, I know I'm using marriage examples here, but it, it's all relationships. I am to be faithful to you. I am to be honest with you. I am to love you with steadfast loveness and kindness, even when you don't deserve it. I am to do that. That's what scripture is talking about here. Um, so let's go look back at, at Psalm 3, verse 3. He says, um, write them on the tablet of your heart. Now, what are the things that we write on the tablet of our heart? Things that are really of utmost importance right? Things that are the most important is really what we want written on our hearts. Um, what did God write on tablets? Well, he wrote the Ten Commandments on tablets. Those things were really important. Um, by the way, those tablets were not iPads or anything like that. They were actually carved out of stone, uh, really important things. But um, God wrote what was most important on tablets. And, and so what Solomon is saying to us today is, hey, these things, love and faithfulness, you need to practice them so that ultimately they will become a part of who you are. Write them on your heart. And here's how we do that. We ask God. We ask God, change my heart. I'll practice the things. I will be faithful to my word. I will treat people with kindness. I'll do those things. But God, I, I need you to change the inside. Here's what's cool. God is those things. God is love. He is faithful. He is true and he's steadfast. He is all of those things. And I, I don't know if y'all remember the story, but King David in the Bible, King David had had, he had really messed up. He had messed up bad. And in Psalm 51, uh, King David had, um, had just committed adultery. The woman he committed adultery with got pregnant. So he wanted to cover that up. So he um, had her husband killed by sending him into battle. Really, really bad stuff, right? Really bad day. And so David in Psalm 51 is crying out to God. And, and listen to what he says. I love this. He says, God, have mercy on me, O oh God, according to your unfailing love. So David cries out, God, I've messed up. I've messed up really bad, and I need you to be who you are. 
God, you are merciful. I need mercy. God, you are faithful. I need your faithfulness. God, you are gracious. I need a whole lot of grace. He was calling on God to simply be who God was, and he was reminding him, God, this is who you are, and I need that for me right now. So this is in God's character. God's character is loving and faithful and all those things. And so um, when we look around our lives and actually practically how things work out in our lives is being loving and faithful is hard. You know why? Because people are not those things to us right? I'm sure you all have people in your life that have been unfaithful in the relationship, have been unloving or unkind or just flat out rude or have bold faced lied to you. We all have that. And so we're looking around going, okay, I get it. Be loving and faithful, but these guys don't deserve it. There's people out there that just don't deserve it. If we will practice these things, there's blessing that's coming when we do. God knows that it's gonna be hard for us. Um, for those who don't know, I, I love to fish, and, and every year I go out to Montana, and it really wouldn't be a Sunday of Derek preaching if I didn't share a fishing story with you, so I feel like I have to. Um, so I was out fishing in Montana uh, years ago, and my buddy Jeff Williams was with me. Jeff is 6'10 feet tall. He is a bunches and bunches of feet tall. Um, he's, he's this much short of seven feet tall. I mean, huge guy. When he walks into a room, you know it, okay? So really tall guy. We're out there fishing in Montana. We're fishing the Madison River. And the only thing you need to know about the Madison River is it's not super deep, but it, it flows very fast. Okay, so I'm fishing and I'm looking and on the other side of the river, I see a fishing hole that I want to get to because I, I know there are fish in there. And you can just look and tell. I know there are fish. And so I start to walk across the river and, and water is, is hitting my legs. And again, the water's moving pretty quick, but my legs are pretty skinny. And so it just kind of shoots on by my legs. But then I get to a, a part of the river and I step down and all of a sudden I'm at my waist or halfway up my waist and the water is pushing hard against me and it's, y'all, I'm, I'm fixing to go down and it's bad. And my buddy Jeff, kind of um, the, the really tall guy, he, he walks into the river and he, he literally stood, so the water is coming this way, and I'm right here, and Jeff stood right here. Now, what happened when he did that is when he stood here, the water went around him and around me. It wasn't pushing me anymore. The water was pushing on him, and by the way, it was up to, you know, here to me, and it was up to his kneecaps, and so he's just fine because he's walking on stilts, and so he's standing there. He's like, I tell you what, Derek. As I take a step, you just, you have to stay in step with me and walk right behind me and, and I'll get you to the other side. And that's exactly what he did. But it wasn't like he would take a step and then I would take a step. I had to go right with him because he was blocking all of that force that was coming against me. He was blocking it for me. And so we did that. We, we would take that step together. I'd watch and, all right, he's moving. All right, he's moving. And I'd take those steps and we made to the other side and I caught a bunch of fish. I would, as a matter of fact, I have some pictures. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> so uh, one day I'll show you some great pictures of, of fish. But we made to the other side. So here's, here's why I tell you that story and here's why it's so important. Because God knows that loving people is hard. He knows that being faithful is hard because people are unfaithful to us. And so God says, I tell you what, I'm gonna take all the, the weight of what it means to love and to be faithful to people. I'm gonna take all that weight onto myself. You just keep your eyes on me and then I'll get you across. I'll get you where I want you to be. Because here's the thing, y'all. The spirit that is inside of us, he has those characteristics that's who God is. God is love and faithful. He's in the side of us. If we are following Jesus, we have that spirit inside of us. And he just says, you keep your eyes on me and I will always lead you to love and faithfulness. Hear that. We don't have to just do it and be this. God says, if you just keep your eyes on me, 
I will lead you every step of the way, even if it's one step at a time. I'm going to lead you toward love and faithfulness. Y'all, sometimes we just have to get out of the way and let God do it. The way we do that is we just keep seeking him. We keep our eyes on him. Um, <laughs> there are, um, you know, the reality is when we, when we look around us, um, there could be situations in life where you are, are looking around and going, I don't, I don't see that God is loving and faithful. I mean, that's, a, that's an honest feeling that some of us go through. I don't see where God has been faithful. And my bet is the, the Israelites probably had that same kind of feeling for a period of time. For those of y'all who don't know, the, the, the Israelites were in slavery for 400 years. That is a long, long time. Longer than the U.S. has been a country, the Israelites were in slavery. And yet they knew that, that God had promised them the, the promised land. They knew that they would not be in slavery all their lives, but they, for 400 years, that is a long time, they were in slavery. People were born in slavery, people died in slavery. More were born in slavery, more died in slavery for generation after generation. But God is faithful. And God did lead them out of slavery. And listen to what God says. This is in Exodus chapter 20, verse two. This is the first thing that God says to Israel after he brought them out of slavery. Listen to what he says. He says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. The first thing that God says to them is he reminds them, I am your God. We are in a relationship. Relationships are important. I'm your God. We're in relationship. And then he says, and by the way, I've been faithful. I did bring you out of slavery as I said I would and brought you into a new land. God is faithful. You know, God um, actually made another promise to Abraham as well. And I wanna show you how faithful he is. He made a promise to Abraham. He said, Abraham, I am going to make your name great. Now, this was thousands of years ago. God said, Abraham, I'm going to make your name great. So watch this. Before today, I want you to answer this question. Before today, raise your hand if you've heard the name Abraham. Look around. Almost everyone. Do you see what's going on? Thousands of years ago, God says, Abraham, I'm going to make your name great. You can count on it. Thousands of years later, on the other side of the world, we know Abraham. God was faithful. And so if you're looking at your circumstances and going, God, I don't see how you're gonna be faithful here. Circumstances are really rough right now. They're very difficult. God's saying, I am faithful, period. It is my character. I can't not be faithful. It's who I am. Some of y'all need to hear that today. Whatever your circumstances are, God is faithful. He's got you. So the encouragement this morning is that we are to never let love and never let kindness leave us. We are to bind them around our necks, that we are to write them on the tablets of our heart. And then again, let me remind you of the blessing. And it's in Proverbs 3, verse 4. He says, then you will win favor with, and a good name with God and man. You know, when he was writing that, he could have just stopped at God. Then you'll win favor with God. I've been like, yep, sign me up. That'd be enough. Favor and a good name with God? Are you kidding me? What else could be greater than that? But he goes on, and with man. You know what? You will find favor and a good name with people that don't like you. That's kind of cool. You'll find favor and a good name with people that absolutely disagree with you politically or disagree with you spiritually. That's the promise. That's the blessing that comes from this. Let me pray for you. Father God, I don't pray for them. I pray for us. Lord, we want to be changed by you. We want love. We want faithfulness. 
to be a part of our character. So God, we want to practice those things on the outside so that, that you internally, through your spirit, will make that a part of who we are. And God, I pray that as we love and as we are faithful and truthful with those around us, God, that you would use that to give us a platform to speak truth into people's lives, to love people well. Use it as a platform for us to love and be faithful to more people. Ultimately, Lord, so that people will know you. But God, have your way with us. Change our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen.